In this session, we are discussing insertion onto an array. That means, we are trying to insert one data at a certain location or a particular location onto an array. Obviously, this insertion operation can only be carried out if there are some available space in the, in the respective array, then only the insertion operation can be carried out. Okay. I think it would be better if you go for one demonstration or example. See, this is one array, the name of the array is A. It is having 12 locations. So, from 0 to 11, these are the index values and we are having 12 locations. So, max lock is equal to 12. Out of these 12 locations, 8 locations where index is ranging from 0 to 7, they are having some data. So, n is equal to 8 is the number of data existing into this particular array. Now, at the fifth location, not the index, fifth means first, second, third, fourth, fifth. At the fifth location, I want to insert one item with the value 100. So, lock is equal to 5 and item is equal to 100. So, we here we are having max lock is equal to 12, n is equal to 8. Now, when n will be equal to max lock, that means this array is right now having that number of data as much as it could hold. So, that means there is no scope of any kind of insertion operation and this situation is known as overflow condition. So, overflow condition means in this particular scenario, the overflow condition will appear whenever we are having some insertion operation, but there is no free space. Free space. That means, when n is equal to max lock, then no insertion can take place. Now, let us suppose here n is not equal to max lock and n is lesser than max lock that indicates we are having some room for insertion. Now, if you want to perform the insertion operation, then this data, all this data are to be shifted to the next locations, so that I can get a vacant space at the fifth location and I can perform the insertion operation. Here index is equal to 4, but the location number if you count and start from first. So, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So, at the fifth location, I am going to perform the insertion operation. So, the shifting of data can be done in this way. You see, uh, content 2 will be moved to the next place, 6 will be coming to the next place, 3 will be coming to the next place and 22 will be coming to the next place. I should not perform the shifting in this way. 22 will be coming to the next place. If I do, then 3 will get overwritten. So, that is why I should start shifting from data 2. So, 2 will be coming to this place, 6 will be coming to this place, 3 will be coming to this place and 22 will be coming to this particular place. So, now in this way the shifting will take place and then this particular space will become free or empty then 100 can be put there and thus the insertion operation will get completed. And it is quite obvious that after insertion the value of n should get increased by 1. So, initially it was 8. So, after insertion operation, it will become 9. So, we shall have to take care of everything. So, see, actually the thing is that 2 location 8 to 2 location 8 to 5, the data will be going from 7 to 4 location. So, what is 8 to 5? 8 to 5 is the target location number. And what is 7 to 4 is a source. Source location. So, 8 plus will be filled up with the 7 plus data. So, at the 8 plus, 7 plus data will be coming. And similarly, at the 5th plus, 4th plus data will be going. So, at the 5th plus, 4th plus data will be going. So, these are the target locations and these are the source location numbers. So, in this way it is working. Okay, now, see. So, what is 8? Look at here. What is 8? 8 means n. What is 5? That is lock. What is 7? That is n minus 1. And what is 4? That is lock minus 1. So, in this way, ultimately, we are converting this 8 to 5 to n to lock 
and 74 to n minus 1 to log minus 1. In this way, I am just converting all these values to the respective variables name so that it will have the generic approach. Okay. Now, see if I consider i as the target, if i if i is a target location number, so that means i will be ranging from n to log. Now, it is quite obvious that 8 to 5 means I should go on decreasing by 1. If I want to go from 8 to 5, that means I should go on decreasing by 1. So, the respective for loop will be like this. So, for i is equal to n, i greater than equal to log because i is denoting the target location I told you and i minus minus. So, now at the a i place, see at the 8th place, 7 place data is coming. So, at the i th place, which data will be coming? A i minus 1. So, that is the that is the logic when i is denoting the target location. Now, consider the other one. When i is denoting the source location number, then i will be ranging from n minus 1 to log minus 1. So, so i will be ranging from n minus 1 to log minus 1. 7 to 4, I can go after decreasing only, not by increasing. So, i is denoting the source location. So, 7th place data is going to the 8th place. So, in this way, if I treat i as a source location, then in this way the shifting will take place. So, now let us write the algorithm, complete algorithm for array insertion. So, this is my algorithm for array insert. So, I am passing a that is the name of the array, max lock that is the maximum size of the array, we know this, n is the number of valid data and lock means the place number where we are going to perform the insertion operation and item is the respective data to be inserted. So, I am writing this one, if max lock is equal to is equal to n, print overflow and exit that means, if there is no space, then obviously, you should uh, print the message overflow and exit and for i is equal to n i less than i uh, greater than equal to log i minus minus that means I have written this particular code there. The same code I have put there for i is equal to n i uh, greater than equal to log i minus minus a i is equal to a i minus 1 I could have also written the same here also no issues. So, now if the shifting has been done properly then a log is equal to item n is equal to n plus 1 then exit. While writing this program in C, we know that here the value of n is getting increase in array insert and that should be reflected or this updated value of n should be obtained by the caller also. So, in that case obviously, it should be done in call by reference and lock means the input argument, item means the input argument, max lock will be the input argument and this and here the value of n should get increased. So, that is why this particular n should be done using call by reference. So, in this way in case of C programming also this sort of algorithms can easily be easily be implemented and my syntax is to some extent inclined with the C language. So, it will be helpful for you to write the respective C code for the execution and here in this way we have discussed how the array insert operation can take place. Please watch the next video where you will be going for add a delete operation. Thanks for watching this one.